Hello friends and welcome to this new session of the AWS. So I created a playlist in which I keep on posting uh, any videos that is related with the AWS. And I will try to cover all the services that currently we are in a popular demand from the AWS side. Recently, I also get selected in the AWS Community Builder. And if you want to know about how the selection procedures and what is the criteria we have to meet to get selected in the AWS Community Builder program. So you can put a comment uh, in this particular comment area. Uh, I will try to make a video on that as well. And as you already know, which already subscribe and are watching my videos, that I am a Dev DevOps professional, okay, uh, certified DevOps professional, solution architect and developer. So in this particular video, I am going to discuss about the Amazon RDS, in which I am going to use the MySQL uh, database instance. So I am going to create it, and we are also going to look into it at how we can uh, access it using our client tools for the MySQL. So currently I am in the AWS console. We are going to create a RDS instance here. So we have to click on the services and from there you can access the RDS services. Okay. Uh, from here you can create a database. It will give you a several options that particular which particular database you are going to use. So I am uh, selecting the default one, the standard uh, create. Easy create will hide some of the configurations and you can uh, do the configuration later on also. But uh, the standard create will provide you all the options and you can do the configuration at the time of creation, creating of the database. For the Amazon Aurora, I will come back later and uh, I will come back later for all these things. We will uh, do the video for that also. But in this particular video session, I am concentrating on the MySQL. So I selected this. Okay, the additions will be MySQL community. Okay, the default version, whatever it gets selected, I'm not going to change it, but you can change it as, as per your requirement. So 8.0.28, you can select. Okay, I'm not doing it for the productions. Uh, I am using it for the free tier so that you will not get charged. So I'm going to select it. But some of the advanced feature uh, really not provided in the free tier. Okay, for the database name, I am just uh, leave at as it is, or you can change it uh, accordingly. Uh, the username, admin will be fine. Uh, for the master password, it should be eight characters. You have to provide any any of the password for the master password. I am just using the random number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight character. You have to uh, provide the eight character here and confirmations one two three four five six seven eight i'm using uh, very you can see that uh, the, the password is not good but this is for the demo so i will use just a number for the password uh, for the free tier you get the uh, first triple classes for the t2 micro i'm going to select from here okay and uh, I will not going to change anything so, because I am using the fleet here. Okay, enable storage auto scaling. This is the very good um, criteria, and you have to uh, select it so that whenever the any thresholds get met, you have a uh, capability. Database have the capability to, to extend uh, the database size accordingly. And uh, multi AG. This is for the production uses. This is very recommended uh, for the uh, production uses that whenever there, there is any failure, then the standard by instance, uh, which is in sync with the master instance, uh, get, uh, get uh, the, all the data from the standby instance in case master get a failure. So the DNS will root automatically and uh, whenever there is a failure, the, the, all, the, all the transactions get routed to the standby instance. Okay, but this is for the free tier account, so um, all the options get disabled. Okay, <clears throat> don't connect uh, to the EC2 instance. This is uh, the, the connectivity that uh, is the default one. I'm going to select one. The VPC you have to decide at the time of database creation which VPC you are going to use because once the um, database get created, you can't change can't the same information uh, provided by the Amazon as well. Yet. 
the subnet you can select any of the subnet uh, that you that you have in the default um, uh, vpc accordingly and it will get pressed here for the public access the database in instance will all on, on it's a good practice to put it in the private subnet okay so only the web uh, application which is in the public instance um, yeah. can talk with the uh, database instance which is in the private subnet okay but this is for the demo and i just uh, want to show you how we can access uh, the database instance using the sql client so i am uh, selecting it as a yes uh, vpc security groups this is very important because you have to uh, opt the vpc security groups uh, in which you have the uh, 3306 port that we are using for the mysql should be open okay i am choosing the existing one which is the default one uh, but later on we will change uh, it but um, because uh, as per my understanding in my default i am not allowing the 3306 port so i will do it later okay uh, the availability zones uh, you can uh, um, uh, you can select uh, accordingly as per your requirement and uh, regarding the VPC security bit, you can create a new one as well from this interface and you can add the 3306 port for the MySQL. The password or authentications uh, you can use the password authentication to for the connectivity with the database. You can use the IAM database authentication also. So this is as per your re requirement. The additional configurations the enhance uh, you can select the enhance the additional configurations here uh, you can provide uh, the the database that you are going to uh, create okay when the database bit, get built you can add the runtime and you can do it uh, later as well like uh, i'm using my database so when it's get created uh, automatically one database created for me and the uh, uh, DB parameter groups and option group uh, you can um, uh, create uh, before creating the database and link it accordingly okay we have only the default one the option group you can uh, change it uh, after creating the database as well so the extra parameters with suppose your uh, with sub with, with uh, the extra parameter with uh, which support your requirement um, you can uh, do the changes accordingly and you can provide it uh, for the immediate uh, uh, immediate uh, apply also and or, or in the maintenance video the changes will get applied you can uh, do the settings accordingly for this for the retention period uh, we have a time limit for the till 35 days we can uh, for the backup and retention period we can select any of them if you select zero it means that you don't want uh, to keep the backup for that particular database instance you can prefer you know, do a selection for the backup window also or you can send, uh, apply or no preference so that the, when the schedule when there is a any patching uh, for the database or for the windows it's uh, automatically get accordingly as per the um, amazon okay uh, or you can choose uh, your window as well okay uh, for the log export, it's a um, uh, get uh, changes as per your database instance. Either you are using the error or SQL or Postgre or Oracle, it's a uh, change accordingly. This will uh, stream uh, the logs to the CloudWatch, and you can monitor your uh, database instance. You can select all of them. This, this is the good for the logging, and, and the, all the logs get um, uh, linked with the CloudWatch, and it's provide all the things. And accordingly, the role is also get provided. You can see here. Okay. So enable auto mirror uh, minor version upgrade. So we will uh, keep uh, on tick as it is this is the default feature and it's a good feature and uh, for that particular uh, minor version upgrade you can choose a window or there is no preference you can uh, okay for the delete protections you can enable it so that none of the persons will go into the environment and delete your um, uh, database instance first they need to uh, change the delete protections to disable and then only they can and uh, delete it but uh, i'm not going to uh, enable it for the, as this is the for the demo demonstration purpose for the monthly cost uh, as i'm using the free tier account so nothing get charged for me so now it's time to create a database i'm just click uh, on the create database and it will uh, take some time it will take some time and for that uh, we have to uh, pause this particular video as per your requirement 
uh, the, the default one you are not going to uh, change it any anything in the parameter groups what you have to do you you can create a new parameter groups okay you can create a new parameter group and after that uh, you can change it from here and uh, from the actions and you can change the parameters uh, ac accordingly for that particular uh, whatever the modifications you want you can do it from here as well okay so uh, you just need to uh, create an option group the parameter group and then uh, you can uh, modify the uh, the configuration of the database that which particular uh, parameters group you have to use which particular options uh, group uh, you have to use and the apply should be uh, under the maintenance window or you can apply it immediately but it's always a good practice for any of the changes that you are doing in the parameter groups it's not critical then do it in the maintenance window or uh, if there is a urgency then you can uh, do it in uh, immediate effect as well okay so um, uh, this is the database has got created and it have the endpoint and uh, i already mentioned you that how to change it and I will show you as well in the next session how what is the importance and what what configurations we have for, under the options group, parameter group, and uh, how we can modify it. That is a part of the next video. Okay. In this video, we are mainly concerned about the creating of the database and uh, just uh, try to establish uh, connections. So for the client, uh, we are going to use uh, the client here. Uh, the SQL electron okay so we can you can use the SQL electron here okay and uh, just click on the SQL electron and uh, download the GUI and as per the operating system you will find the downloads for all the operating system that you if you are using the Mac or Windows you can download the binaries accordingly and once it's get downloaded like i already downloaded here if you see in the download section i already downloaded and this is the sql electron if you run the exe here you have to pass the sql endpoint just click on the database and copy the sql endpoint okay and in the electron window just click on the new window so you have our new connections informations you have to provide okay the server host will be the endpoint okay and you can provide uh, any alias name here my sql Okay, the database you have to select accordingly. The port is already appearing here 3306. The username is admin. Okay, and the password is 12345678. This is the very big password. This is for the demonstration. Now you can test this. So this is going to fail. And I already told you the reason behind it because I am using the default security groups. Okay, and the default security groups don't have uh, the, the allow port for 3306. So, this is the default security groups. I am going to edit it for the inbound profit. Okay, the inbound rule, I am going to edit it. And uh, here I am going to use the MySQL. Okay. This is MS SQL. I am going to use the MySQL, okay, the 3306, and for any of the IPv4, I am going to delete it after the demo, okay. There is no problem for that. Save rules. The rules get saved. Now I am going to open the again for testing, and this time hopefully it will get connected. Uh, it's not get refreshed. Let me check it again. Either the changes it applied or not in the default. Okay, the changes 
is applied. Let me uh, review it again. For the MySQL TCP 3306 custom custom from anywhere and save the rules. So now you can see that the connection is successful. So we are going to now save it. Now connect it. So it's connecting to the database. And accordingly, you can see the database that we created at the time of creations in my database. You can create it later as well. So you can uh, do a query, a SQL query to fetch the information from the database. So hope uh, you like this session and uh, I will going to cover lots of topic regarding the RDS also and other services of the AWS. So if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends as well. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.